Hello everyone, welcome back to my course Integrating Copilot with Azure OpenAI Assistant for custom instructions augmented by function calling. This is part two of the course where we'll be creating a custom chatbot in Copilot Studio and all the dependencies. If you have not already watched the part one of the series where we had configured the Azure OpenAI Assistant, I would highly recommend you to please watch that video first. I've given the link of the same video in the description. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So here I am on my Copilot Studio. And what we are going to do is to create a Copilot chatbot starting from create. So I'll click on create and it will give me an interface where I can create a new Copilot or I can create a new Microsoft Copilot action. For now, we need to create a new Copilot. I'll just click on it and I will be providing the inputs for creating this Copilot. So now it has given me an interface where I can just chat with Copilot and let it know what kind of a chatbot we need to create. We can do it that way, but for now I'm going to skip it to configure. So I've skipped it and for this, I'll just name it as Demo Copilot. I'll not give any description, I'll not give any instructions and I'll not add any knowledge base. I'll simply click on create. So it will start setting up my copilot. It will take a couple of seconds and it will be able to create a demo copilot chatbot for me. And from here begins the actual work. Now that we have the copilot chatbot ready, if you look at the right hand side, it says, hello, I'm a demo copilot, a virtual assistant, just so you are aware and all the text that is created by default when a new copilot chatbot is created. We need to go to the topics and add a new topic. So I'll create from blank. I also have the option to create from description with Copilot, but that is not needed because we want to create a topic which the users use to interact and get the generative answers and also the generative questions for the function calling. I'll click on from blank. And if you look here, it says trigger phrases. We don't need that. We need that for an unknown intent, not for the already configured text, which is understood by Copilot. So for that, I'll click on the three dots here under more and I'll open the code editor. Here, if you see, it says on recognized intent. What we want is on unknown intent. We'll change that and click on save. It will update the topic for me. And now if you see the trigger says on unknown intent. That is needed because if you have multiple different requests to be processed automatically and you are creating different function calling methods or functions, you can use this single topic because here you can use the same topic to interact with different functions of the assistance in Azure OpenAI. Now what we are going to do is to create a global variable. For that, I'll go to variable management and set a variable value. We can just click on select a variable and if you see here, it shows no available variables. I will click on create new and a new variable with the name where one will be created for us with an unknown type because it depends on the type of value we are providing here. I'll just click on this variable. It will open the variable properties. I'll change it to conversation history. And I want to make this variable a global variable. So I'll click on global and that's it. I'll just click on close. Now for the value, I'll click on the arrow. I'll go to the formula. I'll expand that. Let me paste the formula. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the existing global variable, which is conversation history and adding it to the activity dot text, which the users enter. Also, we are removing any unwanted text. So that is why I have given substitute and I've used system.activity.text, the one that the users will be entering. And then I've provided this text. So that will add the new text to the existing conversation history. I'll click on insert. And now I need to call an action. This action will send the conversation history data to your Power Automate flow. And from there, it will trigger the Azure OpenAI Assistant. Based on that, the Azure OpenAI Assistant will process, look at the user inputs and accordingly send the response in a natural language. So let me click on call an action. And here we have create a flow. I'll just click on create a flow and it will open the Power Automate interface for me. 
and I will wait for the interface to be loaded. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name from here. Instead of run a flow from Copilot, I'll give it a name of processing exchange requests and hit enter. And once that is published, I'll go back to my Copilot chatbot and see what happens. Now that this is published, I'll go back to my Copilot chatbot and click on done. What it will do is it will add a new action for me. I can click on call an action again and it will load the newly created flow for me. I can click on processing exchange requests and it appears here as an action. If you have noticed, I have not configured the flow as of yet. I'll be doing it, but let me complete this part of the Copilot chatbot and then we will go again to our Power Automate flow and completely configure our flow. So I'll scroll down again and here I need to show the response from your Azure OpenAI assistant. For that, I'll just click on plus and I will just click on the message. For message, I can simply write any text here and this will be replaced by the actual message coming from the action. But since as of now, I have not configured anything under flow, that is why it does not show anything. I'll scroll down again and here I need to add a condition. I need to check whether the response has a specific value or not and based on that, take further actions. So for now, since this action does not contain anything, I have to leave the condition as is. And then again here, I will set the variable value. For that, I'll go to variable management and I'll click on set a variable value. I'll use the global conversation history variable. I need to set the value of this conversation history variable to blank. For that, I'll click on this arrow, go to formula and type in blank. Once done, I'll click on insert. Now that this is done and the conversation is over, I need to click on plus again and I need to go to another topic which is end of conversation. And that's it. Our Copilot chatbot is ready but still we need to make certain changes. So I'll go up here and after the conversation starts, I need to add a condition here again. Now you'll be wondering why am I doing this? Because here I'm using the formula to append the new text to the already existing conversation history because I need to check whether the conversation history here is a blank or has some value. For that, I'll click on select a variable, click on conversation history, and here I'll say is not blank. It means it has a value. And if it has a value, then it will add the activity text of the user to the existing value. If not, then I'll set the value of this conversation history variable to a blank. It's as simple as that. I'll click on save and actually we are done with creating the chatbot using Copilot Studio. Simple, isn't it? Now is the time for the real meat and potatoes for which we'll be working on the Power Automate flow. But before we do that, let me tell you that all of the components that we create as a part of the Copilot Studio chatbot becomes the part of your solution. And you can see the solution in Power Apps. So let me open the Power Apps interface for you. And this is the home page. If I click on solutions, you will see different solutions appearing here. The default solution or the preferred solution is the Copilot OpenAI. If I click on it, it will show you that you have two chatbots and there is one cloud flows. Apart from that, there are several components which are Copilot components. Let me click on the chatbots here and you will see two different chatbots. One is the demo Copilot that we were working on and the other one is Enterprise Service Desk. Apart from that, if I click on Cloud Flows, it will show the flow that we had created earlier, which is Process Exchange Request. Now, under the Cloud Components, there are 17 items. And if I scroll down, the last one is Untitled. This is the one that we were working on. This is actually the topic that we had recently created. Since I did not give it a name, it appears as Untitled. So everything becomes a part of this particular solution, the name of which is Copilot OpenAI. What I need to do is I need to click on new and then under more, I'll create an environment variable. Now, if you remember, I had copied the endpoint URI as well as the API key from my OpenAI Studio. And that is what I'm going to make use of. For that, I'll open my notepad 
and these are the two components that I had copied from there. I'll just hit enter. I'll create a JSON string for which I'll type in endpoint. I'll give it colon. I'll just copy the URI here, give a comma and again for the API key, I'll write API key, give a colon again, copy the value from here and just paste it. Once that is done, I'll write a comma again and now I'll type in assistant ID which is assistant underscore ID and for this value where I'll get it from I'll have to go to my AI studio and copy this value from there so I'll just leave it as blank for now I'll close it with the curly braces I'll minimize this go to my AI studio and here you can see the assistant ID I'll just copy the same Go back to my notepad and paste the value here. So my JSON string is complete now. I'll just copy this, minimize my notepad, go back to my Power Apps and for the display name, I'll give the name as GPT model. And the name appears as ATCSL underscore GPT model. No need to give the description for the data type, I have different options. I have decimal number, the JSON, the text, yes or no, which is a Boolean value, the data source, as well as a secret. What I'll be doing is I'll be choosing JSON and then paste the value that we had created. I'll click on save and it will create a global variable in the JSON format. And these values can be referenced in my Power Automate flow. That is the reason I created these as global variable. What I could have done instead is I could have written the hard-coded values inside my Power Automate flow, but that is not the ideal way of creating the variables, especially these kind of variables where you have the API keys or the client ID or the client secret as well as the endpoint URI. It is always better to write it as a global variable and keep it separately and reference them in your Power Automate flow. And that is what I have done. Now that all the configuration is complete, it's time for me to start building my Power Automate flow. So see you in part three, which is the last demonstration of this course, post which we'll be doing an end-to-end -end testing of this solution. See you there.